What's up guys and girls, Raj here, back with another video. In this video, we are going to learn about Kubernetes network policy. This is one of those things which seem complicated, but we are going to understand it in a simple manner, as well as see it in action with a demo. All right, let's get started. Let's start with Kubernetes pod networking requirements. Each pod gets its own IP address. All pods can communicate with other pods without any network address translation. And what this means is the IP address of the pod is same throughout the cluster. So if you have two namespaces in your cluster, namespace one and namespace two, and you have some pods running in each of those namespaces, so po one pod from namespace one can ping the other pod in namespace two using the IP address directly. It doesn't need to translate the address. And it doesn't matter whether these two pods are running in two different worker nodes. Throughout the whole cluster, the pods will have the same IP address. So expanding this to a more real world scenario, Let's say in your Kubernetes cluster, you have two applications running in two different namespaces, app A and app B. You also have a namespace for database where you are running some pods for your Redis database. Remember, by default, all the communication between all these pods are allowed. So both the pods for app A and app B will be able to reach the pods running in namespace database. But what if in a multi-tenant cluster, you want to be specific. So you want the pods running in app A communicate with the database, but you don't want the pods for application B or app B namespace communicate with the same database. So this is what you achieve using Kubernetes network policies. Using network policies, you can control traffic flow at the IP address or port level, which is OSI layer three or four in between these pods. So this is great for multi-tenant cluster, where in the same cluster you are running multiple applications or you or you are sharing the same cluster for development, test, and production. So let's jump into the demo. So I have a EKS cluster running, and if I run kubectl get pods dash a, which is gonna show us all the pods running in my cluster. So you can see there are three namespaces, namespace a, namespace b, and namespace c that I created outside of the default namespaces. And you can see, there is one pod running in each namespace. So if I run the command kubectl get pods dash a dash o space white, this is gonna show us the IP address of the pods. For each pod running within namespace a, b, and c, we have the IP addresses. So let's try to ping these pods from each other. So let's say we want to ping the pod running in namespace B from the pod running in namespace A. So the command we will run is kubectl dash n for namespace, namespace dash A, and then this exec part means whatever command we're gonna put at the end will be executed from inside this pod. So it will be executed from inside the pod, this test 8455-QVQFN, which is the name of the pod in namespace A. And what is the command it is gonna execute? It is gonna execute the command at the end, which is curl and then an IP address. This IP address is actually the IP address of the pod running in namespace B. So basically, we are trying to reach to the pod running in namespace B from the pod running in namespace A. And as you can see from the output, 
it gets a response back. All these pods are running Nginx container, so it gets the standard Nginx response. Similarly, we can ping the same pod running in namespace B from namespace C. So the pod ending with H4VDW is actually the name of the pod running in namespace C and the IP address is same which is the pod running in namespace B. So if we map this out in our previous diagram, so we have three namespaces, namespace A, B and C and now I have put the actual pod in each of them with the actual IP addresses that we got from running our kubectl commands. I have also shown the label for namespace A which is myspace colon namespace A and the label for the pod running in namespace B which is environment colon test. So the objective of Kubernetes network policy will be namespace B pod should be allowing traffic from namespace A but the traffic from namespace C should not be allowed. And this is the command to see the labels for namespace. So I'm running kubectl describe namespace de space namespace dash A and you can see the label is myspace equals to namespace A. So what will be the network policy? So this is the actual network policy. The kind network policy signifies that this is a manifest for network policy. Under metadata, name is just the name for this network policy. But more importantly, the namespace, namespace dash B and under spec, the pod selector with match label environment colon test signifies that this network policy is implemented for the pods with the label environment colon test within the namespace namespace dash b. Under policy types, you have two options. Ingress is to control the incoming traffic into this pod. You can also have egress which controls the outgoing traffic from this pod. But in this case, we are only controlling the incoming traffic so that's why the policy type only contains ingress. Now under ingress, under the from statement, we are specifying the clause namespace selector. So this network policy only allowed traffic coming from the pods running in a namespace with a label myspace colon namespace A, which is in this case, namespace dash A. And after you deploy this network policy, this pod in namespace B will not accept traffic from any other pod which doesn't match this ingress criteria. So the pods running within namespace C should not be able to communicate with the pods in namespace B. Once you have this network policy YAML file, you apply it like you apply any manifest, which is kubectl apply dash f and then the name of the network policy file. So if you don't do anything else and you applied this policy and then you try to ping namespace b pod with the IP address 192.168.1.66 from namespace c, it should not have been allowed, right? Because that's what this network policy should be doing. But you can see the curl goes through. So why is this not working? Because network policies requires network policy agents to be effective. Network policy agents enforces the network policies. And network policy agents are not installed automatically in your Kubernetes cluster. So there are some options for you to install different network policies. We have Weaveworks, Calico, Antria, etc. So for this case, we are going to install Calico, which is an open source network policy in our EKS cluster. So this is the link to install Calico in EKS cluster. 
it's pretty straightforward doing couple of kubectl applies so let's go ahead and install calico in our cluster all right so let's install calico so i'm going to copy these commands paste it here all right so the calico is installed all right now that calico is installed in our cluster let's test out if this works so now we are going to call from namespace a pod to namespace b pod and this should be allowed as per the network policy okay so we are calling namespace a to namespace b pod ip address nice so this is working now the moment of truth now let's try to call from namespace c pod to the same namespace b pod and this time it should fail all right here we go from namespace c pod to namespace b pod ip address and as you can see we did not get any response back it is still hanging and that means our network policy along with calico is working there are a couple of other options to restrict traffic so we learned about restricting traffic using namespace you can also restrict or allow traffic using ip address block and also using the labels in the pod so on the network policy on the left mention there is a dash in front of all these selectors that means these conditions are working with as R. So whenever one of these condition is true for the incoming traffic, the traffic will go through. In contrast, on the network policy document on the right, you will see there are no dash in front of namespace selector or the pod selector. So these are working as AND condition all these three conditions needs to be satisfied for the traffic to go in so these are the two main ways that you will use network policies but beyond that you can also use port in ingress and egress so let's take a look from the kubernetes documentation so in this sample network policy under policy types you can see we have dash egress in addition to dash ingress so under ingress one thing to note is it's also controlling traffic in a specific port so not only it has to match one of these conditions for the incoming traffic but the incoming traffic should be coming within this port else it will not be allowed and under egress this controls the outgoing traffic so this two and then IP block CIDR means any pod where you are applying this network policy to, in this case, the pods within the default namespace with the role DB will only be able to connect or reach out to the pods within the IP address of this CIDR block and the outgoing connecting traffic should be directed to the port 5978. Note that whatever traffic is allowed by the ingress rule and coming to the pod is allowed to go back out. That is not controlled by this egress rule. This egress rule only applies for the connection initiated from this pod where this network policy is being applied to. I have saved the sample network policy that I covered in this demo in my GitHub repository so feel free to grab it and test it out just a little plug if you are interested in learning kubernetes and container with amazon eks fargate with devops feel free to check out my udemy course it has pretty high rating and some very good reviews it starts with simple container concepts and then goes to basic kubernetes then to advanced kubernetes and then dives deep into eks concepts and then how to implement applications on kubernetes using devops 
Alright guys and girls, that's the video. If you found this video helpful, if you learned something new from this video, please click that like button. Smash it if that's something you are into. Each like really helps this channel grow. YouTube algorithm recommends this video to other viewers when you uh, click the like button. Also click subscribe if you are not subscribed. Uh, ask me any questions in the comment section. Let me know what other Kubernetes videos you want me to make. Alright guys and girls, that's it for this video. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.